Hello, let's finish off feel this time. <laughs> that's a bit of a bold thing to like finish feel. Obviously that's a, be an ongoing thing to some extent. But um, uh, we sort of started things like screen shake and uh, the feel of the firing the guns, but there's not much on uh, what happens when you actually destroy an enemy. So that's kind of what we will do this time. So last time it was the screen jolt, which is um, giving you a feeling of kick on the weapons. Um, and this time it will be uh, screen shake on, on their deaths and then particle effects for when they blow up uh, and lighting. Um, so that's kind of where we were with all the weapons feel pretty good and somewhat distinct. Something a bit weird about our bullets which we'll look into one day. <laughs> um, but yeah, they all feel different, they all feel like they're actually firing. Um, but it, everything else is a bit of a mess <laughs> in terms of... Well, it's not a mess, it's just... Uh, the, the explosion chain reaction thing I, I will change today because uh, it's kind of making combat trivial. Um, and I want death effects for these characters. Uh, let's do screen shake first uh, because that just builds on something we already built. Um, and... Yeah. Uh, and we'll do a basic... Uh, version of that. Where is screen shake? Here it is. <laughs> so our screen shake code, like screen shake, we're going to treat differently to screen jolt. They're going to be two separate things. Um, it's always tempting because they both involve moving the camera over a period of time. It's always tempting. Is there some universal system we can do to combine them? I don't really think so. Because um, fundamentally, like a screen jolt is uh, our version of it. Of, a very kind of simple version of it is that someone just gets to set the jolt vector like anyone can just set that and um, the screen is instantly offset and then it moves back to where it was um, and that's a single motion in one direction screen shake is going to be a period of <laughs> that um, random motion and so uh, we're going to need a few things uh, one is so just like we have a jolt decay factor, we're going to have a public float uh, shake decay factor. And just like we have a jolt vector, we're not going to have a vector for screen shake because it's not actually in one direction, it's in all directions. So all we need to know is what's the magnitude. So it won't be a vector 3, it will be a public float um, shake amount. Uh, and we will do something like... Um, so this code here, I'll give it um, a comment and I'll say uh, set our position uh, to the jolted position. That's what it does right now. And so this, this bit right here is the jolted position. And so um, it would be... What I want to do is, is make that into its own variable. So we're going to add something else on. We're going to add a screen shake uh, factor um, onto that as well. But this line is getting a bit messy now. It's, it's all these terms all in one row. They're not very well separated. So what I want to do is create up here where we say vector 3 normal position. I'm also going to say vector 3 uh, desired position. And that will simply be uh, desired position equals normal position plus jolted vector, which is what we had in there. Uh, and then I'll just put that variable name in there. So now this code is all exactly the same. It's just it's just a different way of saying it. Um, and we'll call it desired position. This isn't necessarily where we move to. It's where we're trying to move to. We are going to be limited by our max move speed. We're only going to go that far in that direction. And so with jolt, it's very simple because the desired position is this one specific point. And uh, as, as jolt decays, it will get closer to where we were. Um, but with shake, the desired position is going to be moving all over the place. And with jolt, we didn't care if if we're already in the middle of one jolt and another jolt happens. That's fine. We just do the new jolt. We don't we ignore, forget the old jolt. We're just doing a new one now. That's fine because a the jolt is all coming from your weapons. You're not going to be firing two different weapons in two different directions at once. Um, and b if you ever were you know if we fired like one big shot over here and we're still recovering from that, and we fire another big shot over there. It'll look fine if you snap to the new jolt because the jolt is in the one of its characteristics is instantaneous. Um, but screen shake and jolt are going to be happening on top of each other all the time, 
because uh, the jolt happens when you shoot and the screen shake happens when something blows up. Those two things are very closely related. Um, uh, I'm no detective, but I'm going to say it's probably your fault. Um, and it would suck if this if the screen shake overrode the jolt. That would suck because um, you want to feel the jolt. The jolt's important. Um, and ditto if the jolt overrode the the screen shake, then you probably just wouldn't see the screen shake. One of them would just get lost completely. So we're going to combine them. Um, and what we need for that is that we do need a vector. It's just that it's not going to be um, the uh, the same vector. You know, jolt vector is very simple. It's this one thing that decreases over time. Um, this is the part where we decrease it. I'll write that down. Jolt vector decreases. Um, so we want a shake vector, but remember we've only got the shake amount right now. now. Someone else is going to tell us the shake amount, the initial shake amount, will decay over time. But how does that translate into a vector that we can actually apply? Well, I want to write something like um, uh, vector 3... Uh, is that going to... Complete, yeah. Uh, shake, shake vector, not vector. Uh, equals new vector three. You're going to create one out of these three elements, um, x, y, z. Uh, what are those three elements going to be? I want each of those to be a random number, um, and I want it to be uh, the the largest that random number can be is shake amount, and the smallest it can be is negative shake amount. I want it to be in, in either direction. You can go shake amount in either direction, in any of the three axes. So that means the camera can, if we say one meter, then the camera can shake one meter left, one meter right, it can shake one meter up, one meter down, and it can even shake one meter forwards, one meter backwards, um, which might seem like a weird thing to do for screen shake, but actually it's good because, uh, you know, the ultimate result of that is a slight difference in zoom, and that's reasonable, you know. Um, there's no reason the camera would be prevented from getting closer or further away as it's shaking around in a random fashion. Um, so I can write, uh, for each of these things, I can write random dot range. Uh, yeah, I'm right, that's range. Um, and we'd go from minus shake amount to positive shake amount. Uh, does it like that? Yeah, it does like that. And then we just do that three times. Uh, we can do that, but uh, it's not great to be writing the same code three times. And if you wanted to change that later, it would be a pain to change it in three different places. So because we're going to, I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like that. That's the line we're writing. It doesn't even fit on the screen. Uh, you can do it that way. It's not it's not a crime or anything, but for convenience, what I want to do is make that its own function because we need it a lot. So I'm just going to write float um, random. Let's actually call it get random shake amount, uh, and then it's two brackets because it's a function. Uh, we're not putting anything in the brackets. We're not going to pass anything into it. Um, uh, and it's just going to give us a, that, that exact thing. Um, and we need to write return in front of that. We're gonna, this is what we're giving back. We're giving you back this random range. The reason I'm doing this as a function and not a variable, I could declare a variable that's equal to that, but then that random dice roll only happens when you set the variable. It would never happen again. So all of those three axes would happen in the same direction, in the same, uh, will be offset by the same amount. Which we don't want. We want it to be recalculated every time, so it's a function. Functions are the things that do things every time you you call them. Um, and float is because it's going to return a, a you know just a number. Because um, re remember, we're going to build a vector out of this. So it's not a vector in itself yet. So now we just do get random shake amount, get random shake amount, get random shake amount. <laughs> we are still writing something three times, but it's a much simpler thing. It's easier to read that, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I use the word get there specifically because um, uh, it's commonly used in programming. This is a, a, a common convention is, is when you're writing a function that just exists to go out and find some information and bring it back, uh, using the word get is useful. And then sometimes you want to use the word set if the purpose of the function is to, is to you know, set something, to change some data um, that it doesn't necessarily return to you. Um, if we just write random shake amount, that's probably obvious in this context, but for, if our code gets more complicated, it might be confused with some function that actually sets the random shake amount or something like that. Um, yeah, that all looks good to me. So every frame, shake vector gets recalculated. There's, random, uh, there's a random shake, a vector that represents random motion in all three dimensions by as much as shake amount, but no, no more. 
Um, it could be zero, it could be you know, um, something much less than shake amount. Um, and the next thing to do would be to actually add it on to the desired vector, uh, desired position. Um, you might notice that this word is blue and the others are white. That is because I just declared this up here. It's reminding us this is a local variable. If I couldn't refer to it in here, I can't say shake vector here. It doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I can say jolt vector because that is a that was declared up top. So we've got access to that. That's just a useful thing to know if you're ever wondering what these color mean. These colors mean. Um, and I'm just trying to think: is there anything else we need to do here, or are we done? Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, we said the shake amount would, would um, decay, right? So shake amount exactly the same as how it does for jolt. We're going to say uh, shake decay factor. Okay, so the way we're actually going to call this, well, let's go in and, and set all those variables first because we just we declared a bunch of things. We made a bunch of slots for data but we haven't entered any yet. And that's going to be, on, we're still on a main camera thing. It's all one script that does this. Um, Shake amount, we're not going to set right now. Uh, shake decay factor, I will. And I think I'm going to set it something like 0.9. Um, and then I think we can just run our game. And to, to test whether this is working at all, I can just enter a number into shake amount. And we'll see it happen. Hey, there we go. That's a nice shake. That's a big shake. What's a really big shake? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so that's 10. This is 100. What's 1,000 like? <laughs> What's 10,000 like? It's the results we're seeing are not. Um, this is the nice thing about our smoothing thing. Remember, we, we smoothed out all this motion by having it instead of just moving to the desired position, we move towards it by uh, only up to this amount. And that means when you put in a crazy screen shake value, it doesn't break the game. It doesn't become impossible to see or play it or anything. But it, it is noticeably different, right? That, that 10,000 was pretty crazy. And that's because it's moving as fast as it possibly can. You know, the, the move amount is huge all the time. Um, and you're, it lasts longer because it takes longer for that big value to decay. And also it can drift further because um, each step is very big and it could be in, in um, for a long time it's going in random directions. Uh, anyway, long story short, I think that feels good. And actually this is, um, let's, let's get the idea of values here. Like what do you think killing a small enemy should feel like? Um, where am I? Am I dead? I guess I died. <laughs> um, so that's probably a one is certainly enough for a small enemy. It might even be too much. What would 0 0.5 feel like? Yeah, that feels like about right for a small enemy. And then two, two's a big explosion. Excuse me, that's a big explosion. What's three like? Three's too too much, I think, for killing a... I'm thinking about the guards will have a big explosion and the, the small enemies will have a small explosion. Uh, I think three feels jarring. It's like, it's hard to keep track of what's happening while it's, while it's going on. Two's significant, but about right, I think. Um, so, uh, so I could just add that to explosion, right? Explosion is our prefab that, that triggers on death. Uh, but actually, one of the things we want to do today is create effects. And something we realized last time, or at some point in the past, um, yeah, it was last time, is that it, it really sucks to put any cosmetic stuff on, on the explosion um, object because the explosion object has to last for a very specific amount of time because it's a gameplay thing. It exists for 0.2 seconds and that's the time when it's dealing damage to everything. We can't have it stick around really. This is really just a very functional damage dealing volume. It's not really a visual effect. It happens to be the only visual effect we have at the moment but we're going to create new ones. And so I don't want to add that to the explosion prefab. I don't think it makes sense. I think we'll, we'll end up in a situation where we're having to keep this thing alive but then close off parts of it uh, to make sure the damage thing happens. This this damage radius will just be its own thing. And when we want a damage radius, we spawn this. When we want a cool, nice effect, we spawn this new object that we're going to make. So let's make a new object. Um, I'm going to right click on scene and say game object create empty. And I'm going to name it death effect. Um, so I guess on a very basic level, um, uh, well, let's give it We'll need a script of some kind, so let's call it death effect. And on that script, when it opens, we could give it um, one of the most basic obvious things we could do is give it a public float for shake amount. And then 
on start, as soon as this thing's created, the death effect is not going to be created until the thing dies, uh, we can go to references, same way we would have called screen jolt. We go to references, screen shake, and we're just going to set shake amount, excuse me, shake amount equals, um, what did we say? Oh, sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> we're just setting a shake amount. So my idea is that this is, uh, this behavior, we'll put it on all of the different death effects. And so we don't want to make any assumptions in here. We don't want to hard code it to be a small shake because we'll, we'll use it for things that have big shake as well. So, um, that is really basic. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's put in 0 0.5 there. And let's, the only thing we have to do to hook this up, enemy, prefab already has a slot for death effect, right? Um, somewhere, health system is where we, we store it. Right now it creates an explosion on death. I did say we were gonna stop it from, uh, we weren't gonna make everything explode on death. And so let's have it, uh, I haven't made it a prefab yet, have I? Excuse me. So I created this in the scene, now I'm gonna drag it into the, the project folder to make it a prefab. Um, and let's go back to our enemy prefab and then where it says explosion, we will select instead death effect. And so now we're, we've made the field temporarily worse, I think, <laughs> because uh, when we shoot these things, I mean, you can hardly tell the shake because, um, and this is gonna be even worse, <laughs> uh, because we've got a lot of jolt going on at the same time. So actually that was a bad test. I should, um, let's update our death effect. Let me, I'm just gonna delete this one from the scene for now, uh, so I don't get confused. Uh, let's actually give it 10, just so we can tell that it's working. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's a significant shake. That actually feels not as crazy as I thought it was. I mean, it's crazy, but it's it doesn't feel horrible. Um, it's obviously too much for the, for the little guys though. Um, okay, so actually another really easy thing we can do before we get into particle effects and stuff, let's stick to what we know for now. Um, let us, uh, so one of the things we sort of awkwardly, we had to create a whole new object for the explosion sound. Well, with our death effect thing, this is going to hold all of our cosmetic stuff for death effects. So it's going to hold up, you know, fancy visual stuff. Um, it might as well also do the sound because um, it's going to stick around until it's done with everything. Um, and so let's go get that uh, short explosion noise. We've added an audio source component just the same way we did for explosion sound. Um, it's gonna play on a wake, so that'll just be done. And then um, I am going to pretty much just take what we had. Uh, let's see, is it worth copy pasting this or should I just write it again from scratch? Explosion. Oh no, actually, it was one shots. Oh my god, what has it done that for? Oh, that was a waste of time. Uh, okay, I did not tell it to change focus, but it did. Um, it was called one shot sound, wasn't it? Um, yeah. This. Uh, so, this is almost the code we need. And so I could just put a one-shot sound component on this thing. Unfortunately, that doesn't quite work for our purposes because one thing we want to do is we do want to kill it when the source is done playing. Um, but really, the, the key thing is that um, our... Yeah, the, the problem is this, this component kills the object as soon as the sound is done playing. And so how long the effect thing sticks around is... Um, going to be uh, dependent on uh, just the length of the sound. You never want that kind of situation where like the visual effect is going to be deleted when the sound you know, gets destroyed. So I'm basically just going to adapt what we have here. Um, if I just, uh, well, let's just copy it line by line. I'm just going to copy that thing. We'll probably not use that one shot sound component again, but it's code. It's good code. <laughs> I'm glad we wrote it because we got it uh, for our purposes here. Uh, so we declare a slot for the audio source. On startup, we look for an audio source component on ourselves. Um, and then 
I this is playing thing we will use that but uh, actually we don't want to uh, be dependent on that we want to um, let's just give this thing a duration uh, uh, maybe we don't need to maybe we don't need to okay um, yeah let's let's do this so we will check if our audience is playing or destroy ourselves um, if it's not but pretty soon we're going to add particle effects to this and at that point we will also want to check is our particle system uh, still running uh, so this is not finished code this is just placeholder for now um, but uh, yeah that integrates everything we were doing with our one-shot sound so now we can have sounds on these things um, and this might be enough that we can do prefab variants which is a concept that is useful to know about um, I guess I'm not waiting for anything to change here am I um, uh, so we have a death effect uh, I guess that's everything So all we're doing now is just checking that it creates um, yeah. death effects are created and then they eventually disappear. And we should we're hearing a sound again, which is good. So that explosion is a bit much. It's a bit much for the um, the little guys. The big guys don't seem to have a death effect at all. So this is what I want to do is we've got this one prefab. Um, I want to um, create a variant of it. Uh, and actually, will they both be variants? Um, maybe. I <laughs> can't quite decide. Um, let's... No, I think we'll, we'll keep the death effect. Let's just make this the death effect for the standard enemy, the enemy that we're dealing with most of the time. Um, so they've got one now and uh, but I want to I'm going to drag it into the scene I'm going to change it some um, so actually sorry before I do this uh, let's delete it let's open the, this prefab let's get it set up how we want it for the little enemies so 0.5 for screen shake a tiny amount of screen shake but you'll only notice it when there's a lot going on and this sound for dying is okay but let's actually make it quieter there's a volume slider here we're just going to set that to half and let me just check if that feels alright. That actually feels a like a little bit loud and the screen shake felt like too much, which is surprising. Uh, let me just triple check that this is linking to the right thing. Yep, shake about 0.5. Okay, let's try 0.2. Oh, also, I'll look at the camera while this is happening and see if um, see what our shake amount is saying. Yeah, that's all. That's all under control. Um, I that's actually too low. I think now. Let's I guess do 0.4. Um, oh yeah, that feels alright. When you're destroying a lot of them, you can feel it getting getting rocky. Um, but it's not too crazy. Uh, cool. So the reason I wanted to configure it for them is that now I want to drag it into the scene and let's configure it for the guards. The guards are much bigger enemies, they have more health, um, so I'm going to give them a full volume uh, audio source and we decided that two was about the right amount of screen shape for killing those things. Um, and now that I've got that configured, <coughs> excuse me, I what am I going to do? I'm not going to go into the guard and uh, you know, death effect prefab. Uh, my options here are select something that's that's on the same game object as us, one of these things. 
uh, or I go to the assets and select prefab. Well, I don't want either of those things because that depth effect is configured for the small enemies and there's nothing on us that, that corresponds to it. Uh, I can't link it to this thing in the scene, nor would I want to because I don't really want this thing to remain in the scene. So I want to make a new prefab with all these details, but we're going to change this prefab a lot. We're going to add particle effects to it and lights to it and stuff. I don't want to have to change two different prefabs every time I update it. So uh, that's what prefab variants are for. So now that this this is an instance of the prefab, I've modified it. You can see this, this word is in bold because it's been changed. The volume is in bold because it's been changed. And if I drag a modified prefab into my project folder, as if I'm trying to make a prefab, it says, oh, do you want to make a new prefab or a variant of the prefab? We want a variant. Um, oh, and it's got a very <laughs> a branching paths uh, modifier to that. So this is death effect. I'm going to call it big death effect for the uh, guards. And so now this, we don't need this instance in the scene anymore. Um, this is now, we can edit this one that has the shake amount of two and the, the full volume, or we can edit the, old, the original one that has half volume and shake amount of 0.4. Um, and so let's actually do it. Let's hook it up. Guard, scroll down to the health system where it says death effect prefab. Let's choose an asset and let's choose big death effect. So now we should have two different death effects going on. I, I appreciate they're very minimal visual effects at the moment. Uh, in fact, they're not visual effects. That's a significant blast from, from one death. If I shoot this guy, almost imperceptible blast, isn't it? Yeah, and the noise is louder too. It's a little bit hard to hear over all the weapon noises, and I appreciate it. I have had to turn my uh, desktop volume down a lot uh, so that I'm still audible. I hope I'm still audible. Okay, cool. Uh, that's all of our screen check stuff. That's prefab variants explained. Um, now we're gonna add particle effects. Or shall we do lights first? Because lights is uh, maybe a bigger return on our investment <laughs> quicker. So the main thing I want to stress with this, we put the sound on the, on the actual root game object, but for anything else, we're gonna create um, smaller ones within it. And uh, I've created a new game object and I've added uh, and I've said light. I've added a component called light. Um, that's a pre-made one. Um, and we want to uh, set up a light that's going to fade it, like shrink over time. Um, yeah, fade in intensity over time. And the reason I'm especially keen to make it a child object is that I want to it needs to be a little bit off the ground. Remember our guards and stuff are at, um, their Y coordinate is zero. If you create a, a light at zero, uh, it's kind of halfway through the ground and it's kind of touch and go whether it shows up at all. <laughs> it might, you know, whether the game considers it's beneath the ground or above the ground is, is arbitrary. Um, so you don't want that. We want to create it a bit above the ground. The problem with working with all this stuff is when I come, go to edit the prefab, like, okay, I can switch to scene view and here's my, Here's my death effect. What the hell am I looking at here? <laughs> like, I can, okay, there's a light here. Oh, let's name the game object light. Uh, I can increase its range. Oh, you, you can see a circle there getting bigger when I do that. But God, how do I judge whether this is right or, or wrong? And I can increase the intensity, but like there's nothing to illuminate. So um, there is a way to make this much easier. When I was doing my practice run of this, I thought this is, this is hopeless. So I've got to put an instance in the scene and keep editing the instance. And that's terrible. You, you can see the effect it's having, but then every time you make a change, you've got to remember to apply it to the prefab, which is this manual process that uh, gets kind of uh, tedious. So instead, we're going to fix it the proper way, uh, which is to go to Edit, Project Settings. And somewhere here, there's an Editor category. And amongst that, Prefab Editing Environments. Uh, and so that is the scene that when you're editing a prefab itself, it puts it on a blank canvas, basically. If we click, uh, sorry, just to explain, um, where it says regular environment here, all the way along here, there's a little target icon. I click on that. And then the only option is sample scene, which is the only scene we have. That's the one we're making. Um, and hopefully, I think I, by clicking the close button, I aborted without, <laughs> without uh, accepting that change. No, I didn't. Uh, I did save that change. Maybe I need to get out of this and go back into it. Yes, okay, I do. All right, so now we basically have a admittedly slightly weird looking version of our scene uh, and we're still just editing the prefab. 
I guess I guess the upside of it looking really weird is we're not going to forget we're editing a prefab, <laughs> um, so that's nice. Uh, and our prefab is is roughly where it will spawn. You know, if I died here and I had a death effect, this is where it would spawn. It spawns at y equals zero, um, and that's important because I want to make sure that this light is a little bit above. Um, and then let's give it a bigger range. Oh, sorry, there's one more step. Um, there's a little lighting icon here. If we click that, now we can actually see some lights. Yeah, like I said, it's a bizarro version of this world. Uh, we don't seem to get the the lighting that the scene actually has, uh, but that's okay because all we want to know is just does this. Um, you know, if this was at Y zero, you can see there's a problem, right? We're not seeing any light. We should be seeing some light. So I've got to drag it up a bit. Um, we do want it fairly close to the ground, I think. Um, that seems about right. And let's give it. Uh, well, the settings are going to be different for different things. So uh, the one we're editing right now is our uh, small death. It's our small enemy has died, and that's probably all the light it deserves. <laughs> it sounds really harsh. Um, actually, let, let's increase the range a little bit right now, because what I want to do is also set the color, and I want to pick a color that feels explosion-y. Um, I'm going to drag that all the way to the that side. What should an explosion feel like? Um, somewhere in the orange range, isn't it? Something like that. And you can make it paler too. That maybe, maybe a bit more orange. Yeah, that'll do. Um, that's quite a small light. And uh, last thing to do is there's a render mode thing down here that's set to auto. I find I need to set it to important, otherwise you just don't see the light at all. It's sort of if it's auto, the engine decides whether or not to show you the light at all because it, you know for performance reasons. Uh, if our game slows down, then we can think about whether how many lights we need and all that stuff. But because um, our game is pretty simple, I'm not finding that it does. So we've added a light to our death effect. We should find that when we kill small things now, there's a, uh, oh, when we kill anything actually, uh, there's a small light. Oh wow, quite a big light. <laughs> oh my god, it's huge. <laughs> Yeah, so that prefab scene has its limits for how, how well we can judge the effect of what we're doing. Um, I guess, but I can edit this while we're going. So let's let's reduce intensity just down to one. That's still extremely intense. Uh, let's reduce range down to five. Still extremely intense. And for one of them, that's all right. Um, I guess we'd go lower than one for intensity, 0.5 intensity. Yeah, I want it to be fairly subtle unless you kill a lot of them. Um, maybe that's a little bit low. I can drag it up a bit. Uh, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to put that to one and we'll just reduce the radius a bit. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, as you notice, the, the visual problem with that is it, it vanishes very abruptly, uh, but we can fix that because what we will do is um, just like we have an audio source, we'll have a, uh, let's actually have a public light, uh, my light, and um, we want to store its, we could reduce its range or we could reduce its intensity. I think it makes sense to reduce its intensity. It's totally up for up for debate. Um, if I just say float uh, light, oh, um, max light intensity, then on startup we are going to do max light intensity equals my light dot intensity. Uh, and we haven't established a reference to it yet because we're going to do that in the inspector. Uh, the reason for that being that it isn't on the same object as the script that we're writing. Um, the script we're writing is on the death effect parent game object, um, and the light is a child. So we're just going to drag it from the hierarchy into that slot, and it gets a reference to the light. Um, and then we also need a public float for um, duration of this whole death effect. Um, and uh, we'll have a private uh, float for um, uh, seconds 
what? How did I phrase this before? <laughs> I've written this already today. I can't remember what I called it. Seconds alive. I feel like, what do we want? It, I want it to be zero when you're nearly dead. So seconds left. I'll just call it seconds left, yeah. And then on startup, seconds left equals duration. Um, if you're wondering why, why did I make this public and then didn't make this one public, uh, this one we're going to set in the inspector. This one, it's, it's its own internal count of how long have I been alive. We should never be editing that outside of this. I don't really care about, you can just make everything public if you're in doubt. There, there's no problem with that. It just gets a bit confusing if you have a lot of them all and you're not sure which ones you're supposed to be editing in the inspector. So one of them is, is the standard for how long should we be alive normally. And then the other one is an internal count of um, how long have we been alive. Did I forget to save? Yes. And hopefully, yeah, we're editing the, the, the base prefab of death effect. So duration for this, um, let's just make it one second. And then we need it. We need to set a duration because what we want to know to set the light intensity, um, uh, we're going to in update. We'll we'll do my light intensity equals something. What should it equal? Um, well, we want like a fraction that represents how how alive we are. <laughs> that's going to fade out over time. So when when it starts, we want it to be one. Um, so the easy way to write that is seconds left divided by duration. Uh, that by itself, that's going to start at one and slope off to zero, because seconds left, how many seconds do we have left? When that is zero, this fraction will equal zero because anything uh, zero divided by anything is zero. Um, and duration, uh, sorry, when we start, seconds left is equal to duration. We just we literally just said that in start, seconds left equals duration. If these two things are the same, it will be one. Um, but we don't want to actually to go from one to zero because our light intensity, we don't know what that is. It could be, it's going to be set differently for different enemies. Um, so we're going to multiply it by max light intensity. And uh, then we also want to actually, um, uh, let's do seconds left reduced by time dot delta time. A normal countdown code and then if seconds left less than or equal to zero uh, destroy ourselves but actually this this code inside um, this is what we want um, destroy ourselves as long as our audio source is not playing if our audio source is still playing then just wait and we don't need to worry about missing the moment that we should have destroyed ourselves because this is going to keep running seconds left can only ever be reduced um, once it's below zero it'll always be below zero and so every frame we'll be checking, is our audio source done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Yes, okay, we can destroy ourselves. And if our audio source is, is long done before this ticks up, ticks down, then that's fine too, because we'll get here and we'll check and it will find it's not playing, so we destroy ourselves. So this is just a two layer check, basically. Uh, I hope that all makes sense. We're ticking down a timer, we're checking what the fraction left is, and then we're using that to modify our light intensity. Yeah, it fades out nicely. That's pretty cool. Um, and now that we have that, we can now edit our big death prefab. And we should find it's already got a light in it. So this is how prefabs work. You edit the, sorry, this is how prefab variants work. If you edit the parent, the variants are all going to get those changes. Um, the, uh, I think I said that wrong. If you edit the parent, the variants are all going to get those changes. Uh, if you edit the variant, uh, the parent is not going to get those changes. Um, the variant is, is just like an instance, really. It's just a sort of, it's like a one up from an instance. If uh, this is prefabs, like the master, master copy, these instances, the individuals were, that nobody else cares about, and then a, a variant is somewhere in between. It inherits from the parent, but instances uh, can inherit from it. And so, all of which is to say we can make the lights range better. And in fact, let's switch to scene view so we can see it. Um, Let's move it out of that lump. And uh, I seem to have to turn lighting back on. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, if, if lighting is not happening, then you've got to click that little sun icon here. Uh, that is quite small. Let's give it a nice big range. Because the range, you can see it affects like, you know, <laughs> well, I'm explaining what range is. <laughs> you know what range is. Um, and let's increase the intensity a lot, a lot. 
it's cool because like there's such a you know it looks like a molten lava or something at the core doesn't it <laughs> um that's just a nice side effect of, of the particular reflective surfaces we have um yeah why not let's have it that that strong and what we should find is that our code nicely adapts to that custom intensity and will fade it out um, just as well as it does for the small ones. Nope, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, why doesn't it? The peak death effect variant has been modified. Um, all of that is there. Let me just check. Well, one thing that's useful to know when you're checking, a, looking into a bug is this reference, I'm hoping it's, it's to this thing. So when I click this, it should highlight it in the hierarchy, and it does. So that's the right reference. We're not referencing the wrong thing there. Um, we, we're not saying anything at all, though, are we? It's not like it's extinguishing too soon. It just doesn't exist. Uh, render mode is important. Uh, the light is at the right height. So the last thing to check is, does the guard really have a reference to this? Big death effect. It does. Maybe the prefab just didn't save. I'll save the scene as well. Oh, it's all something. Oh, oh, it's way offset, is it? Did I move the light instead of the parent prefab? Yes, I moved the light instead of the parent prefab. Sorry, uh, that X position being um, minus 17 was incorrect. When I saw it was in the wrong position, I guess I already had the light selected. I thought I had the parent prefab selected. So select big death effect and drag that over. And now we should be saying the right thing. So the X position of the uh, parent prefab being weird is fine. Uh, its location in this in this placeholder scene is irrelevant. Nobody cares. Um, but it's children objects that really does matter. These should always be zero unless there's, um, you know. Now I'm worrying that it's saying that x being zero is an override. Uh, it's in bold as if that's um, not true in death effect. So I can I couldn't just right click and apply it there. But I just want to check: is that true? Is death effect also got a messed up light? No, it hasn't. It's the same. Okay, so that's a thing to know, I guess. Prefab variants, when they go bold, when a thing goes bold, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's genuinely different. It just means it has been changed at some point. Um, so I'm going to choose revert here. So if I say apply, it means it changes the parent to match us. If I say revert, it means it changes us to match the parent. Um, neither matters in this case because the value is the same, but I'm just going to click revert because I think that will make it not be bold. <laughs> and it's confusing that it's bold. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice explosion. That, to be honest, if I tried this before we made an explosion effect, I wouldn't have bothered to make an explosion effect because that's way better than what we had. <laughs> All right, both of those feel good. Cool. All right, uh, that's all good. Um, and the next thing I want to do is particle effects. Particle effects are quite... Um, you have a lot of options. So we've gone to our death effect prefab, make sure it's the master one, not the variant. Because um, if I made changes to the variant, it wouldn't happen to the, the master. Um, and I'm gonna say create empty and add component particle system. I do it that way, that there's no reason, when you right click on this, there's also a way to go through these menus and find effects and then particle system, you just add that and that'll create an empty game object with that. Um, uh, it's just a matter of habit that I create empty game objects all the time. Uh, let's call it particles. So particles is a game development term for um, uh, these things that you're seeing spitting out of, of the, the light. Um, they are uh, very uh, simple objects that are usually going to be created in large numbers. Um, the reason they exist, the reason it's not, we don't just create a load of game objects, is that these are much better performance-wise. It's sort of a system that's built to run really well when there's loads of things moving, but in relatively simple ways. But actually, these days, I mean, that's how they started, and they used to be incredibly basic. But these days, you can do things like add physics to them, and they can be 3D, if you like. Um, uh, we're not going to get too fancy, but we will We will put physics on them. Um, the uh, sort of complexity is... Um, in just the number of options you have here. Like that's just, this right here is, is like category one 
of this many categories of things we can edit. Um, so you have a lot of control, but it's also you are just sort of trying to do all this by experimentation is, is hell because there are so many weird little gotchas and, and things that are strangely phrased. Um, and yeah, if you don't get it right, it's, it's not clear from the results what you did wrong. Um, so luckily, I have done hours of messing around with this and <laughs> looking at other tutorials and trying to figure out how the hell you do it. Um, so you don't have to. Uh, so in our tutorial folder, um, I made an image for this because, um, wow, I guess it's going to open it in Microsoft Photos and it can't show you anything. Um, this image, soft.png, uh, it will obviously be included in the files I upload, but it's, um, I'll drag it into Unity right now. I'm just going to, this is something I made in Photoshop. I made it by literally creating a new canvas, um, having a white brush with sort of half hardness, if you know what that means, um, and just clicking once in the middle of the canvas, and that's it. That's how I made the image. So it's a soft dot, um, and that is going to be the, the basis for our image. I'm dragging it straight into our project folder. Um, and there it is. Uh, it looks like a white square right now. Um, but if I go to texture type here and I say sprite and then I click apply, we should see, yeah, now we can see what it really is. So it's a soft dot. So I want these pink squares to be a, instead of white soft dot. Cause that's just a general, um, good, uh, what we want to create is like shower sparks really. And just glowing points of light, um, are pretty, Pretty reliable uh, as a and versatile as a particle. Um, everything online seems to suggest Unity comes with this as a standard thing. I couldn't find it anyway, so I just made it myself. Um, and yeah, if you if you can't make it yourself, then it will be in, in the files that um, with this episode. Or if your version of Unity does have this built in somehow, and <laughs> you can find it, then good luck to you. Um, so uh, there's another step to this though. So our particle system here. Um, when I want to tell it how the particle should look, the category for that is renderer, which is, that's relatively intuitive, right? We have um, on anything that has a visual model or anything, we have a mesh renderer. A renderer just means like, you know, drawing it to the screen. So I click on that and there's a load of options here, uh, but it doesn't want a sprite from me. I kept looking for a place to drag a sprite into and you can't, you can only drag a material in. Um, and we've created materials before, and I just want to recap what they are uh, because I thought of a metaphor for it. So this soft dot, it's, in, it's a sprite, it's a PNG image, it's, you know, you're familiar with images. Uh, that is a digital photo, it's like a digital photo. And a material is like what you print it on. So do you want your photo on glossy paper? Do you want it just printed on like standard A4? Do you want it projected in light on the side of a building? <laughs> do you want, all those things would make it look different, right? But it's the same image. Uh, so that's what a material is. It's a way of, of um, it's what the image is drawn on, basically. What kind of material, yeah. Uh, so we're going to create a material, and uh, I'm just going to call it particle material, I guess. Um, and the right up top, there's a, sh a shader category, and under if no under particles, um, that's intuitive enough. We want standard unlit. This is, I've probably explained this before, but unlit is a weird way of saying it's going to be really lit. <laughs> it's going to be very bright. It's not going to care what the global lighting is. It's just going to be full brightness all the time. Uh, that's what we want for particles because they are glowing themselves. Um, and after I do this, this is another thing that I think is very unintuitive and hard to see. Like, where do I set the sprite? Like I just told you that a material is like you take a digital photo and then you figure out how you're going to print it and it's the combination of those things. Where do I set the photo? It's albedo. <laughs> Not the most obvious option for this, but you click that and now we can select our soft dot. Oh, there's the default particle. <laughs> I couldn't find that before for some reason. Uh, like it's not in this folder. I guess, is it in packages? Anyway, it doesn't matter where it is because we've made it now. Um, so yeah, our albedo. albedo I, I don't really know what it means. <laughs> It's something to do with opacity. It's sort of like a map of which bits are transparent, maybe? Uh, I don't know, don't hit my advice. Um, I think that's all we're gonna do for now. That's our, our sprite done. And now we go back to our particles and we scroll back down to renderer and where it says material, we can click on this. It's all the tiniest font. 
but we should be able to see particle material. And that doesn't look right yet, does it? Um, why is that? Oh, I know why. Uh, our particle material, I think we missed a step. Uh, where is it? Particle material. Uh, rendering mode opaque. We don't want opaque. You would think we want transparent, wouldn't you? That's what I went for. Thought, Great, transparent, that's what I want. No, it's fade. <laughs> transparent doesn't work, fade does. <laughs> Can't tell you why, just pick fade. Um, okay, back to particles. Now they are all uh, spitting out like this. I'm going to make a small change. This isn't um, a thing you absolutely have to do. I don't like that orange outline around them. If I, I find it difficult to see what the particle effect really looks like with that on. So under gizmos, there's the selection outline thing. Gizmos is their word for like all the extra stuff they're drawing on top for the in editor mode that you wouldn't see when you're playing the game. And one of the ones I don't like is selection outline, so I'm going to uncheck it. Now we can see what it really looks like. Okay, so as an explosion effect, uh, the main problem is it's... it's <laughs> A continuous drift of snow going in a, a different direction. It's not far from a smoke effect, but it's not an explosion effect yet. The first thing I want to change about this is, if I scroll down, um, emission. This is like, how is it? Oh, sorry, actually shape. Let's change the shape first. So when I click shape, we can see it's it's firing in this cone, and it says cone here. Um, I'm going to click that, and I'm going to say sphere instead. I want it going in all directions, right? Explosion goes in all directions. Uh, Okay, next problem is emission. Uh, the problem with emission is that it's all just happening all the time, uh, continuously. Um, I don't want that, I want it to happen in a burst. And here there's a little category called bursts, and it says list is empty. That means no bursts are happening at all. This is not a burst, this is a continuous flow. So if I click the plus down here, I can create a burst. And uh, count 30, that's not bad actually. Um, probability 10, or you can see it, a little burst there. Um, so that's our burst set up. We can change the values for that later if we want. I think I need to set rate over time to zero. Yeah, there we go. And now we can see the burst, right? Um, and I guess it's looping, so yeah, we'll, we'll see it continuously while we edit. So that's ultimately we don't want it to loop, but I'm going to leave that checked for now because while we're editing, it's quite useful to be able to see it over and over again. Duration of five is pretty long. I'm going to say two instead just so we can see it loop more often. Um, and then what else do we want to change? It's going a bit slow, I would say. If these are supposed to be sparks and explosion, this is in real time. We're not, this is, we're not in slow-mo here. Um, let's make that start speed uh, much faster. Like 20. It's starting to feel like an explosion, isn't it? Um, then what else here do we want to mess with? I'm not going to change starting color because I want the color to change over time and there's a separate category for that. Gravity modifier is zero, so there's no gravity. Uh, what if we say one? You they, you can just about tell that they're falling, but it takes ages. Um, don't worry about realism here because who the hell knows what these objects are. What if we say 10? Well, now that's probably too much. <laughs> now it's happening on, what's the planet with heavy gravity? Is Venus? Um, that's too much, so what's five like? Not bad. That is not bad. Let's leave it as five for now. We can change it later if we need to. Um, I'm going to go through and do the what I think are the kind of most important things here. You are very free to spend as long as you like tinkering with all these things. There's so many. I've spent ages messing around with this stuff to find out what actually matters. Um, and it's quite fun, actually. It can be fun. <laughs> Where it's frustrating when you don't know the essentials because you're just like, well, I want to know like, all this complexity and I just want to change the sprite or I just want the color to actually change. Um, so that's decent. The next thing that's bothering me is collision. I want them to collide with stuff. Uh, so there's a collision category here. Uh, with each of these categories, they're unchecked by default, so you check them as well when you, if you want them. Um, is this really the best we can do for lighting? Maybe I'll turn the lighting off. Uh, I gotta say that doesn't appear to be colliding uh, properly. Okay, so type planes. Uh, what that's saying is is that uh, you don't need to know. <laughs> I did explain planes once, and if you remember that, then well done. <laughs> I've created total chaos. So they are bouncing around all over the place now. Um, and you saw before it wasn't an excessive number of these things. Uh, partly, I guess that. Um, Maybe we're, we're looping it too often, but actually I think the problem here is that our things don't decelerate. They are um, they shoot out at full speed and they carry on at full speed until they until they vanish. Um, 
So, oh, actually, um, dampen. Oh, bounce. Okay, so uh, bounce is at one. I believe that means when it bounces off something, how much of its original speed does it maintain? And it's basically 100%. What if we just set that 0.5? Ooh, that really slows the game down to edit that at all. I'm going to stop this. It's kind of confusing that all the old ones are... Man, they really bounce around for a long time, don't they? Uh, let's... Maybe this thing shouldn't last for two seconds. Maybe it should last for one second. I feel like it's keeping the old ones around even after... Well, let's just, let's just turn off looping because I think that's a confusing issue. <laughs> um, so if I now just click play, we see it once. They do bounce around for ages after. That is not one second, is it? No way is that one second. Um, uh, because I'm an idiot, uh, duration is kind of irrelevant. Uh, oh, sorry, no, sorry, it's not irrelevant. Duration is how long before it kills all the particles. No, that can't be right. <laughs> I don't know what duration is. Uh, lifetime is what I should have been changing. Start lifetime. That's lifetime of each particle. So if I say one for that when we play it, everything disappears real fast. That's an okay amount of time, um, but uh, obviously they vanish very abruptly. So another thing we want to change is size over lifetime. Let's check that. We want this, the size of them to change over their lifetime. Uh, that's intuitive. The thing that isn't intuitive is the like. So let's do that. Great, they start small and they get big. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what every particle system wants, is tiny things that grow into massive things and then vanish into nowhere. I don't know why that's the default. Uh, and so you want to click it, right? Like, let's click this thing. Change it, change it, change it. Why can't I change it? Uh, because the, part, the curve editor is down here and I've got to drag it up. Uh, it'll be a bit different on your screen probably. Um, and this is where you actually edit the curve. This is just kind of an illusion, like a mirage in the desert. <laughs> the desert of not being able to edit curves. Uh, and we can... We, you can mess around with this individually like this is a bezier curve um, where uh, each point has handles on it and you drag those handles it changes kind of how the line wants to well changes the curve I guess uh, I, looking at it will explain it much better than anything I can say uh, but actually there's presets down here so um, let mm, I kind of wish it did loop now let's let's turn looping back on just for now because I want to be able to watch it while it's happening um, okay, so this is still growing. We don't want it to grow. Let's click a different arrow that is it's shrinking. That's quite nice. Um, I think there is even, uh, if I click the, this curvy one, that's better, isn't it? I can't really say why, but that's better. Looks more sparky. Sparks should shrink rapidly. <laughs> um, so this is starting to look good now. This is, this is most of the way there, I think. Um, the biggest thing left now, I think, is color. Uh, I think I'm going to change color over lifetime. Check that one. Expand it. Click on this. I've got some memory that we change, we've we done something like this already, a, a gradient editor. Did we do it for the beam, perhaps? Yeah, we did it for the beam, didn't we? So this is a very similar principle. Um, this is basically a gradient, and uh, the tabs at the top and bottom, one of them is color. The bottom ones are color, and the top ones are alpha, so transparency. So if I set alpha to zero at the end, then you'll see they get more transparent over their lifetime. Um, and that's it's not super important actually since they're shrinking anyway. Um, so maybe I won't do that. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it full. Uh, but I do want some color. Starting white is, is pretty good actually, but let's, if I just click here, I've inserted a new point, let's have them go yellow around here. Uh, so they start white and go, to, go yellow and they go back to white again. Um, I actually think the very end, they should probably be red, like sort of the end of an explosion. That's nice, isn't it? Ooh, I like that already. Uh, in fact, maybe we're done. <laughs> I was going to add an orange thing in the middle, but I guess when you go from yellow to red, who knew you go through orange? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I do not need to see any more. Uh, so should we try it? Are we, are we that far advanced? Um, I think so <laughs> um yeah this all looks good and oh yeah last thing sorry looping we've got to uncheck looping because uh, we're just doing that for our own purposes you can still test it by clicking this yeah i like that okay uh, i think we just click play and just see what happens when we kill a small enemy i expect it's going to be a bit too much of it it's quite a, a heavy wow yeah it's quite a lot <laughs> But it's 
works really well with that, doesn't it? Where this thing is, um, it's only killing them occasionally. When you kill hundreds in one shot, like you do with this thing, it's a bit excessive, but it is satisfying. I'm gonna turn this down just for my own purposes, because <laughs> I'm hard to hear myself. Yeah, man, that feels so much better. And seeing all those sparks like bounce in the corridor, that's what I really like. It makes them feel real. It might be a bit big, actually. Um, let me... Uh, I'm going to reduce the number. Uh, that burst that we set up is count 30. Let's try 15. And then also uh, initial size. Now, where is that? Start size Not is... is one right now. Let's just try 0.5. Ooh, that's quite nice. That's very small now. Let's let's just see how that feels. I actually didn't need to stop the game to do that. We can edit it live. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. It's not a big deal, but it shouldn't be because these are tiny areas. Oh, that's great. Man, that looks so much better. Who knew? That I really like. That, to be honest, that's better than what I made in the practice. <laughs> awesome. Um, I think that's perfect for them. And so now, when we go to edit our big death effect, the variant, we should find it's inherited the particle system, it's got all these settings, uh, so all we need to do is just change it how we want it to be different for the, for the big guy. Um, and I think I want the particles, first of all, they'll be bigger, so that uh, the start size, let's put that back at one. Uh, there should be way more of them. Uh, that is an emission, the burst, uh, 15. I'll go higher than 30, I think 50. Maybe even more. What's 100 look like? Looks good. Um, maybe the size is a bit big though. Let's do just like a 0.67. Uh, yeah, I like that. And what does it look like if we make their lifetime a bit longer? Start lifetime. Better. I like it. Yeah, that's good. Um, and that might be it. The only thing I want to check is um, back in our death effect, there's a duration counter here. Um, I would like that to match... Uh, match the duration of the, the particles, the lifetime of the particles, because otherwise it will destroy itself and all of the particles with it. Um, let's just look at what that looks like right now. There might be a smarter way to do that. Man, I'm in love with that one. Oh, that's good too. Yeah, man, the big light, the big screen shake. It's like a glowing core is left over. This is feeling so much better than it was, like, a few weeks ago. Well, that doesn't sound very impressive. A few a few short tutorial episodes ago. <laughs> a few hours ago in tutorial time. God damn, that feels so good. <laughs> I'm just playing the game now. I forgot what I'm testing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm going to just quickly... Um, nah, I'm not going to do it. This episode's getting kind of long. Uh, I, I reckon there's a way that we could check in code, is our particle system still doing something? In fact, I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, and that would be better than us changing the lifetime here and then also having to remember to change the duration there. But actually, we're not creating hundreds of these. It's going to be like, you know, three or four. Um, and if we hit that problem, it'll be obvious when we hit that problem. So it's not that important. So I think that is it for this time.